Hello friends and welcome back. In this video here, we're going to be talking about the uh, core electrical components for the camper. Uh, so we're not going to go over like all the lights and all that stuff. No, this is just going to be the main, the main systems here. As you can see, not in the garage right now, currently in my office. It, uh, a couple of reasons. One, it's pretty cramped out there right now, especially working in that little storage compartment. So really hard to have the tripod up and work there in the same time and be it is bloody hot out there. So we are in the comfort of the air conditioning for now. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's talk about briefly what, uh, what the objectives are, what, what the components I want to install and the problems that I'm trying to solve here. So let's uh, bring in the pad here. I'm just gonna get stuff out of the way here. All right, so the system that we're trying to, we want to have here is going to it's going to accomplish a few objectives. One is that I need it to switch the load off and on. As the battery uh, gets too depleted, I want it to turn off the load so that we don't do any um, permanent damage to the battery. Second, it's going to have to act as a charge controller. So once the battery gets um, gets too once, sorry once it gets charged, it needs to be able to disconnect the solar panel so that we're not overcharging the battery. And the other option, or sorry, the other feature it's going to need to do is switch between an external power source. So I've got, uh, so when we're plugged into short power, I will, I'll have a power supply that will switch from 115 volts AC to 12 volts DC. And I want it to switch the load basically to, to that so that we're not using the battery, let, isolate the battery, let it do its charging on its own. And the other things it's going to need to do is a voltmeter and an ammeter as well. So we know you know, obviously the voltage of the battery and how much current is coming in and out of the battery. So um, quickly just draw out what I'm, what I'm talking about here is, so again, here's our battery. Uh, and we're just gonna draw that to the ground. I, I apologize for the drawing. This might give you eyeball cancer here. I am no artist, so please bear with me here. Uh, so now this is going to go. So this is awkward for me. I'm uh, trying to like not bump the tripod arm, and it is just in my way right now. So I can't see what's being recorded, and you're probably going to get shucking a lot here. So I apologize. Um, all right. So this is going to be the magical device here, and we're going to have our solar panel and it is obviously going to go to ground as well and it's going to come in and I have my power supply here so that side is going to be AC and then this side here is going to be the 12 volts DC it's going to go ground there I uh, sorry I, I always draw the grounds in I know that it's obvious but I uh I don't know. I like it there. Anyways. Uh, okay. So, uh, and then we're going to go to our fuse panel for the actual uh, devices that are going to get powered. So as I said, I want an ammeter in there and I am going to also want a voltmeter. And this is going to, this having it here is going to tell me what's going in and out of the battery, the current flow in and out of the battery. And I'll also be able to do a voltage, so I can actually know what the voltage of this battery is here. So as said before, I would like the, we're going to need a controller, uh, a charge controller here. So I'm just going to draw that as a switch. So when we're charging the battery, the switch is closed is going to flow into the battery charge it up and then once the battery is charged obviously disconnect that uh, also to uh, we'll get into that later i was going to say to talk about the difference of charge controls but uh getting ahead of ourselves here the other thing that this uh so again i want a, a way to be able to switch between this load here so uh, I'm going to just draw this as a uh, 
uh, sorry, um, double throw single pull switch here. Right, so now this way here, is terrible drawing. Um, so this switch here will actually then, if, if this is plugged in and, and it's basically providing power, then I want the power go to the load. And if there's nothing here, then this switch is over here and will run everything off the battery. And this is what I came up with. This is what I made here. Um, make sure we're in frame. I think so. Again, it's hard to see. All right. So this here, this little MOSFET is going to be the, the uh, for the solar charge controller. That's going to be this little switch here. And it's the way it's going to act is based on what they call a pulse width modulated or PWM charge controller. And what it does is that when you, once the voltage, um, or so you hit a certain voltage or threshold, then it starts pulsing, turning off and on real fast to, uh, to basically keep the battery at a certain voltage. The other option is what they call a um, MPPT or maximum power point tracking. And if you're uh, familiar with like, uh, with, with, buck converters and stuff like that. Basically that's what it is. It's just a DC to DC buck converter. And it's, um, it starts changing the pulse, but it's running through uh, like uh, inductors and, and MOSFETs and, and all kinds of things to basically uh, give the most current, the maximum current through the battery. Essentially it's an impedance matching device. Um, you can get better efficiency with those, but it's also more complex, uh, more things and for our build here, it's not really required. Uh, the, the, I've got way more solar panel than I need on that camper. So I, I'm okay with uh, just using a little uh, PWM charge controller. We've got the, this little relay here, that's gonna act as this part here. So it's going to, as the load, um, basically it's gonna switch the load from either the, the power supply or the battery, depending on which, which one's providing power. Uh, this one is just a little onboard power supply. So it's just to give basically the, uh, to go from the 12 volts to the five volts. Uh, and then we're just using a little Arduino here as the brain box for the whole thing. And I've got a little uh, Bluetooth module. So I actually can connect to this uh, with my phone and see like just using a little uh, terminal serial application. I can actually, um, I can interact with it, see, you know, what everything's going. So I don't have a screen or anything on it. I'll just use my, my phone because realistically, Let's be honest, my phone is usually on me at most times. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, this little guy right there, that is the current. That's the ammeter. It's a Hall effect sensor so that as current passes through it, it basically develops a little magnetic fields. And through magic, it basically produces a, an output voltage the Arduino essentially will see that the fluctuations in that uh, output voltage and will determine what is the current through that based on that output. Uh, the, I know a lot of people will use like a shunt resistor and basically measure the voltage off a shunt. Sometimes depending on where it is, it's hard to actually have current and a uh, bi-directional current through that. Whereas a Hall effect sensor, I can do that. There's, I can um, basically, yeah, like current can go plus or minus and I actually see that. Um, and I, I have, I'm not sure exactly which one I can't really see from this angle here, but there's basically, I've got a couple of resistors there as a voltage divider, and that's feeding in one of the, um, analog digital converters again of the Arduino to actually measure the voltage. So, uh, this is what's acting. It's reading the output of the sensors for the voltage and for the, uh, for the current flowing through. So. Uh, one of the disadvantages, though, of using a Hall effect sensor is that you do need to calibrate it pretty much every time you turn it on because it based on magnetic fields. And obviously the Earth is, you know, we have tons of magnetic fields around us. So depending on if this is changing directions or position all the time, you're going to get wildly inaccurate results. But for the camper, I'm going to park it somewhere and uh, then I can just do a quick calibration on it and then uh, I'll be good because I'm not going to be moving it until it's time to go home anyway. So, all right, well, I think that's enough for this. I'm going to uh, 3D print a top for the enclosure here 
and then we're going to go outside into the heat and start mounting all these components and getting them installed and getting them hooked up. Got a good start here with the, uh, the electrical. Um, so I've got the power supply unit back there. So that's the AC to DC uh, unit there. I have, uh, this is the fuse panel for the solar panels. It was just the easiest way. I just basically took the same fuse panels going to use for all the uh, the other stuff and just basically just bought another one and just put the uh, the uh, solar panels on it. I have uh, 10 amp fuses in there for now. Uh, I think this should be okay. If not, I can always just put a bigger fuse in there. But I just thought I'd start with the lowest fuse first and see how we go there. I uh, still just need to put the cover on that, but I just want to make sure everything works before I, I seal it all up. Uh, and we've got the ground bar there. The other thing I forgot to mention that's going to be connected. So when this goes on shore power, the battery gets isolated. The power supply unit, it, uh, it feeds the power to the, to the electrical system. But there is a standalone battery charger as well that will be, um, that'll be used here. So, uh, oh, and uh, that's going to be the battery mount there. So it's going to sit in there. And then I just put a couple little... Uh, um, tie downs basically so I can just put a strap around the battery just to hold it down but uh, yeah good start so uh, I'm just going to continue on connecting everything and I'll update on the progress for the most part got everything hooked up here uh, in terms of the core stuff uh, obviously still the uh, the fuse panel here is a little empty a little vacant and everything's going to get wired into that eventually but I just wanted just to do a quick test of the core systems anyways um, so walk you around here. There's a there's a lot going on here, and um, okay. So we got the battery, uh, to which I've got my meter hooked up, so I can keep an eye on the voltage of the battery while I'm doing some uh, calibration of the. Uh, of the power manager here. There is the battery charger. And I just got the inverter just connected in here. It's not wired up to anything yet. Just It's just there, just taking up space so I have an idea of where it is. Or not where it is, I know where it is, but where it's gonna be located. Um, and here I have uh, just the thing I made just to basically, it's just a load tester. It's it's an adjustable load is what it is, just a dummy load. And then I've got my yeah, unity meter here too, so I can get an idea of the current. So uh, one of the meters is beeping at me and I'm not sure which one it is. Um, anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're going to draw some uh, power and we're gonna see how accurate the, uh, the power manager here is. So uh, give me one second, let me just get the phone so that we can uh, view this thing over a Bluetooth. Alright, so I just got this app running here. It's just um, uh, a serial terminal. So it's connected to the Bluetooth. Hit S. There you go. So that's going to say there's the battery voltage, how much is being drawn. The usage so far, state of charge, because I also you see here I've said it's a 200 amp hour battery, configured as lead acid. Uh, right now the charge control is enabled, but there is an, we're in the garage, so we don't have any sun there. Um, yeah, so there's the output. Uh, so right now it's saying that the voltage is 12.92 volts, and we scroll up, and that checks out. Uh, just refresh the status. Yeah, see there is where about 50 milliamps are drawing. That's about right. Uh, says the usage is about minus uh, 1.32 amps, which is about right. I've been kind of playing with this, so I'm doing a little quick test to see how it works. So, uh, and we're, you know, yeah. Anyways, so let's get to the test. Uh, so yeah, so anyways, let's compare them. See if we get them side by side here. So 12.94 volts, 12.94 volts, so perfect. Uh, and we're not really drawing anything here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to...
close the relay, heard the click, and if I go to status, it says now that we are drawing 9.82 amps. And on the Unity, it's saying 9.87 amps. So that's, a, that's right. And let's just refresh. Oop. I'm just going to refresh the screen here. And saying that 12.59 volts, and and that's just changed. It was 12.58, but so let's again let's refresh. 12.55, 12.55. So, uh, yeah, all systems go so far. And uh, oh, let me uh, let me show you actually the. Um, all the AC on the outside, the shore power connection, I've got it plugged in here and running into an extension cord inside so I can control it via switch. But if I were to turn on the, uh, the basically were to plug this into shore power, hear the relay fire, hear the fan come on from the power supply, and you're going to see that the battery charger is now connected it's working it's charging the battery this is still saying that's drawing almost 10 amps and if I were to bring this back in here sorry doing this one-handed here it's a little rough uh, so 12.84 volts 12.8485 volts and you see where it says amperage there it's saying that it's uh, negative 0.13, so 130 milliamps. Uh, again, when it gets into low low draw, this thing is uh, not super accurate, but it's also, uh, I would imagine, picking up a magnetic field basically from something that's also causing. So one of the disadvantages of using a Hall effect sensor as an, as an amp sensor is that you can pick up those little anomalies. So just having the little the power supply running is probably generating enough magnetic field that it's kind of throwing this off a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, disconnect all the test gear here. I'm going to clean up this area, clean up the wiring, and uh, we'll, we're going to pull the trailer back outside and into the sun and get the panels in the sun and see how uh, how it works there. Camper is outside. It's a bit of an overcast, sunny overcast day, kind of hazy. Um, so we got some sun going here. Uh, I guess first thing you probably notice is that uh, there's a lot more junk, well, in general, in the in the storage here. But um, so yeah, I've got everything wired in. Uh, I've got the inverter connected. All that basically got the fuses in, so it's actually going. Um, I actually even took it out for a quick camping trip. Uh, so it was pretty fun. Uh, but anyways, I digress. We're talking about the charge controller here. Um, so anyways, I've got an electric cooler plugged in. I've got a just a little shop fan plugged into the inverter here just to, just to draw a load. All right, let's bring my other phone in here. And we will take a look at what we got here. So. Uh, we're currently the battery is currently sitting at 12.57 volts. I'm drawing nine and a half amps off of the battery, and currently consumed about almost an amp hour. Uh, the load right now is uh, I've just got a shop fan plugged into the inverter. Uh, so yeah, so there's the electric cord, just a shop fan plugged in the inverter, and I've got an electric cooler uh, as well plugged in here. So that's the, that's the load. Uh, Right now, I don't have the charge controller enabled just because I'm. Uh, I just wanted to pull some power out of the uh, out of the battery. So um, let's get the charge controller enabled. Uh, okay. So there you go. Uh, and all right. So now. We're at 12.7 volts already. We're putting in two amps into the battery right now. We're charging. Uh, again, our usage is just about an amp hour. 
and as we can see that the solar panels are putting out about uh, 11 almost 12 amps there so uh, let's just refresh that uh, and a cloud just literally came by right now so now we're down to, to about nine amps there so um, let's just give that a little bit and we'll see what happens once it actually hits once the battery's charged all right, uh, I was trying to get you actually closer to the moment where it goes from d charging to charge, but I unfortunately missed it. Um, so anyways, it has finished charging the battery and now it's just keeping it at a float voltage. So if I were to turn the load back on,